Welcome back to Pete's Garage, where behind me I have a GM vehicle, high feature V6 that needs timing chains. My name is Pete, and welcome to my garage. Let me tell you a little bit about this. It's not anything new for this GM High Feature V6. When I say High Feature V6, I mean the 2.8 liter, the 3 liter, and the 3.6 liter. The 3.6 liter is very popular. It's pretty common for these things to need timing chains. It's not a brand new uh, issue, but um, it is something that can probably be prevented with uh, good maintenance. And let me show you what I'm talking about here. Behind me we have a 2010 Cadillac SRX and it has the 3.0 engine. Uh, this vehicle does have 119,000 miles on it. It was actually setting multiple diagnostic trouble codes and those were P0016, P0017, P0018, and P0019. In order to get the uh, all four of those codes, uh, there's quite a bit of stretching going on with those, uh, with those timing chains. One thing I've noticed on a lot of these jobs, where I've done a lot of timing chains on this engine, one of the problems that we always run into is that the vehicle is low on oil. Now, being low on oil, it is going to have a great effect on timing chain life because the timing chains are lubricated and cooled by engine oil. So if you're low on oil, what do you know you're going to have chains that run hotter and they're going to want to stretch right when you get metal hot it's going to it has a tendency to stretch especially if it's under stress of variable camshaft timing also the timing chain tensioners themselves are hydraulic so there are some springs in there but they are also uh, hydraulic so the oil pressure also helps to uh, properly tension those timing chain tensioners so if you run low on oil, you're going to have less tension on the chain, so a lot more slack for them to bang around. Coupled with uh, also running hotter, um, you have a recipe for disaster. Where did all that oil go? This one particularly, uh, it takes about six quarts of oil, and I had to put three quarts of oil in this thing before it even was on the dipstick. So it was definitely run low on oil. The question is where did all the oil go? It doesn't have a bad oil leak. Now the timing covers do have a tendency to leak a little bit on these, um, but this one really wasn't bad at all. Um, the Where the oil goes is actually through the PCV system. And it is designed this way to, you know, all PCV systems do burn uh, crankcase vapors. Um, and that's so you don't pollute, you know, uh, crankcase vapors out into the atmosphere. Um, but on the right side valve cover right here at the back of the engine you can see here we have our PCV uh, hookup or this nipple right there so this nipple comes through and you can see the little orifice inside here now there's this this ledge right here and there's a little a little slot right there where it's supposed to uh, get the crankcase vapors from and so it can burn them through that uh, through the intake because that that nipple there on the uh, on the valve cover leads to the intake manifold and you can see back there kind of the uh, where that leads to the crankcase now one problem is is I think they were having problems somehow with uh, too much air getting through here from the crankcase or too much uh, oil vapors and you can see this one's wide open here so it's sucking a pretty good vacuum on the crankcase. Well, GM released a new updated gasket here. You can see the difference between this gasket and the old gasket. They never actually said anything about this, but all the new gaskets you get from General Motors are like this. So they've cut it down with three little holes right there to try to eliminate the amount of air that's pulling through the PCV system, hopefully reducing the amount of uh, oil consumption. Also, you have to change your oil. If you let this thing go 8,000 miles on an oil change like the oil life monitor might let you go, um, chances are you're probably going to be low on oil. It's, you know, it's by design, it's going to burn oil. 
Um, and usually once you get over the 5,000 mile mark, that's when it's accelerated how quickly it burns oil. So um, the less oil you have in there, the hotter the oil is going to be, therefore the more oil vapors you're going to end up having, therefore it's going to burn more. So make sure you change your oil. I would recommend not going over 5,000 miles. I still think, personally, it's crazy to go that long on an oil change, but uh, 10,000 is really crazy. Now this one, the timing was very far off. Um, I noticed that whenever I checked it before I took the chains off, we, we were it had jumped timing on the intake cam uh, on the uh, left bank quite a bit, and then the right bank was also off, and it had jumped teeth on the on the uh, um, the primary chain down low. All right, here you can see on this front cover how loose that timing chain was. It was actually uh, flopping around so much down there when it jumped teeth that it actually hit that little ledge down by the crankshaft oil seal. So the chain was that loose that it was flopping around and dragging down there. Um, so you can definitely tell that those chains were really loose. All right, if you are doing this job and changing out the timing chains, one thing I would definitely make sure you check out is to make sure all of your cam actuators lock. Now this one, whenever we did get it started up, it didn't run very well because the cam timing was so far off. But um, it did have a pretty good rattle noise. So if you have a rattle noise on startup, this could be your problem. So right here, um, you can see I can move this camshaft without the sprocket moving. You see this? I can actually move the camshaft inside that actuator. So I put chains on there and whenever I was rotating it around, I heard it popping pretty good. Now there's a pin inside of these actuators that is supposed to lock whenever there's no oil pressure on it. And it's supposed to, for whenever you have uh, on startup, it's supposed to be on its base cam timing. And then when there's oil pressure, it releases the lock pin and therefore allows variable cam timing to happen. But not until there's oil pressure. So whenever you're trying to set the timing and you know your camshaft moves independent of this sprocket, that's a bad thing. So we got to get at least a sprocket for right there. All the other ones are locked in. So you can see right here, um, that's solid. It doesn't want to move. And I don't want to be rotating it by the camshafts. You know, see, that's pretty solid. So uh, whenever I first took this thing apart, there was so much slack in these timing chains. It was insane. These things are pretty tight now. Of course, my primary down there isn't very tight because I've been playing with this. Kind of the reason why these timing chains go bad is because they get hot from lack of oil. So if you keep tr keep on to your oil changes and everything, you probably will have a good long life out of these, um, these engines. Also, um, if you are having oil consumption issues, I would suggest maybe trying this new valve cover gasket that goes on that right bank. If you replace that valve cover gasket and make sure you clean out that little PCV valve, that little orifice, just blow it out and clean it out. Uh, chances are it'll really lower your oil consumption. I hope you found this video helpful. If you would like more information on this vehicle or anything like that, make sure you like and subscribe. And thank you for watching.